Hello, everyone. You're listening to Atlanta Sports Podcast, Episode 2. Once again, this is Frankie Maloof, and I am joined by Luke Winstall. Our Twitter account is at ATL Sportscast, and you can check out our website at atlantasportspodcast.com. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to contact us on Twitter or at the show at atlantasportspodcast.com. We thank those of you who found us on iTunes or Google Play, and for those of you who still found us on our website, we are now available on both iTunes and Google Play. Today we will review the latest news from around the city of Atlanta, and we will also talk about our Atlanta Hawks and what their latest news might mean for the upcoming season. Just as a side note for everyone, we do split up our episodes into several different parts, so they are easier to ask access. They are not duplicates. So now we'll start off with the Atlanta Braves. They were swept by the Indians. They took two of four from the Marlins, and they lost the game versus the Marlins at Fort Bragg, which is the first game to be played on a military base. They were swept by the Phillies, and they played the Cubs tonight, so that would be a very interesting game. Braves also made a trade on June 30th, and it was Bud Norris, Dion Toscano, and a player to be named later, being shipped out of Atlanta to Los Angeles for left-handed pitcher Philip Pfeiffer and right-handed pitcher Caleb Dirks. Dirks was traded to L.A. last year for international bonus slot money. Dirks has a 144 ERA and 35-7 strikeout to walk rate in A. He's noted to be a potential setup man as he's very good in high leverage situations. Pfeiffer is a 23-year-old who was Los Angeles' third rounder last season. Pitched to a 2.67 ERA with a 42-8 strikeout to walk rate in 30 innings and high A ball. Todd Cano is hitting 2.26 in Double A. He's really struggling. He signed out of Cuba prior to the 2015 season to a seven million dollar contract over three years, and Los Angeles is going to take three million dollars of that. Yeah, another note is Julio Tehran was selected to join the 2016 All-Star team. Uh, He's the only Braves player, which is not a surprise right now. And the Cubs have the entire infield, the entire starting infield has made the All-Star team. Um, But Tehran did miss his start yesterday. He has an infection in his thigh. They're hoping he'll be able to make his start this weekend. They're not sure yet. Tyrell Jenkins took his place. He pitched 4.2 innings of one-run ball. And in the minor leagues, Ozzy Albies moved down to double A next to Swanson for the first time. So our middle infield of the future finally gets to play together. That'll be interesting to see how that works out. It'll definitely be interesting. Also, another tidbit to note, on July 2nd, the Braves have made several international free agent signings and are still working on signing a few currently. The ones that did sign are shortstop Kevin Mace, shortstop the number eight overall prospect. And Abraham Gutierrez, a catcher, the number 15 overall prospect. Also, Livian Soto, a shortstop who's 16 years old, was ranked as the number 16 prospect overall. Those rankings are from Baseball America. And Mason and Gutierrez are 16-year-olds ranked, and they're very, very good prospects. So it'll be very interesting to see. They'll have a long time to develop. And John Coppola thinks that they will be in the majors fairly soon. They think maybe before or at age 20. Yeah, they so far signed five of the top 30 prospects and have a chance to get eight, which would equal the Padres. Braves did very well, it sounds like, in the international free agents. They also went very over their cap numbers. The next year, they'll be very limited in their spending due to MLB rules. All right, we'll move on to the Hawks. Just some quick notes. You probably heard Dwight Howard sign to the Hawks for three years, $70.5 million. Kent Bazemore was re-signed for four years and $70 million. Then Malcolm Delaney signed for two years, $1.49 million, which doesn't count against the cap. You also probably heard that Al Horford signed to the Celtics for four years, $113 million, after nine years with the Hawks. In some more Hawks news, Paul Millsap is staying. He will not be traded, according to current reports. The roster is full at 15 men. If Mike Scott and Lamar Patterson's contracts are guaranteed, which it seems likely they will be, Scott is the least likely of the two to be guaranteed. There's only $3.8 million left on the cap after signing Malcolm Delaney, as Frankie just mentioned. So more on him, he was undrafted, played last season in Europe, and played for uh, Virginia in college. Another note, former Hawks Raza Peculia, signed a one-year, $2.9 million, that's way under his market value deal. With the Golden State Warriors, he's going to be the fifth piece of their big five. That's just a note because Peculia was a fan favorite for the Hawks, just keeping Hawks fans updated. 
Yeah, we'll get more into the Hawks later on. Moving on to the Falcons now. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. Julio Jones was ranked number eight on the NFL Top 100 Players of 2015. And Roddy White claims he would have self-destructed if he played for the Falcons one more year in an interview on a local radio station. He talked about his friction with the coaches, Dan Quinn and Kyle Shanahan. So I guess it's better for him that he's now a free agent. We did promise you some more Hawks later on in the show, so we devoted an entire segment to it. Our first question for the Hawks is what their starting lineup will shape up to be. And right now, it looks like the starting lineup is Dennis Schroeder at point guard, Kyle Korver at shooting guard, uh, Kent Bazemore at small forward, and Paul Mills up at power forward, along with our new acquisition, Dwight Howard at center. Tago Cephalosha, Tiago Splitter, assuming he's not traded, Mike Scott, assuming that his contract is guaranteed, and the rookies, Tarian Prince and DeAndre Bembry. Also, Malcolm Delaney, a new signee, Mike Muscala, Eddie Tavares, and Lamar Patterson are going to be on the bench. Another debate, a lot of people are going to say, well, is Kyle Korver really, is he going to be starting? Should he be starting? The Hawks seem to like him a lot more than the fans do just because of the way he spaces out the floor. Teams don't have to game plan about anybody on this roster, but they have to game plan for Kyle Korver. If he gets hot, if he's hitting threes, he's a dangerous weapon that they that they have to account for with Tavo Cephalosha or Tim Hardaway Jr., whoever you want to replace him, it's not the same. So I, that's why we think he'll be starting. Alright, and um, will the move to let Al Horford go to the Celtics and sign Dwight Howard instead, will that backfire? I definitely don't think it will. The Celtics, they think they've got their star, but just wait until, just wait until uh, what their fans say after their big man gets some three and a half rebounds in the second round of the playoffs like Al did with us last year. He was the guy in the playoffs that we were just waiting for. We were waiting for him to get aggressive. We were waiting for him to go off, waiting for him to put up a really nice stat line. He never really did. So I I think, you know, a big man that stands at the three-point line, shoots a lot of threes, doesn't get in there and get rebounds, I think that's replaceable. Horford's inconsistent except for the fact that he consistently never shows up in the playoffs or rarely shows up in the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. Who's the backup point guard? We traded Jeff Teague away for the number 12 pick in the draft, which he used on Tarine Prince. But who's going to be the backup point guard behind Dennis Schroeder? Yeah, so the backup is going to be Malcolm Delaney. So Delaney, just kind of the scouting report on him, he was undrafted, played in Europe last year, and he looks to be a decent player, a good backup, because He's got a good value in his contract. It's like two years, $1.5 million. And he shoots a three decently. He's a capable ball handler. That's his skill set. He's not great at any one thing, but he's good at everything that you need a backup point guard to be good at. So he's really the next project for Coach Bud. And he's just like DeMar Carroll and Ken Bazemore coming in on a small contract and hoping to get good coaching, be in a, a friendly, good system. And then... Hopefully in two years he'll be the next big free agent cashing out on a $100 million deal because he did so great with the Hawks. Yeah, let's hope so. We could use some uh, great point guards. Um, and one little one if, what if question for the Hawks. Even if they did keep Al Horford, would matching him and Superman be the right thing? I think it would be the right thing for the Hawks. You'd have arguably the best front court in the NBA. So you have 96 minutes, this is just to mathematically break it down, 96 minutes between the two positions of power forward and center. Paul Millsap and Al Horford can both play the four, and Horford and Howard can both play the five. So you could split that up and get everybody even minutes or whatever minutes you think they should get, but that just means that somebody is going to have to ride the bench. You could rotate that, I don't know how that goes with stability. I don't know if Coach Bud would want to do that. So you'd have one guy on the bench, but he would, could be getting the same amount of minutes as the starters, and that's really what matters. Is 
the minutes and how effective you get to be. But that just takes a player kind of checking their ego and saying, well, I'll be a bench player, but I'll still have a big role on the team. That means putting the team first. And a lot of NBA players don't want to do that. And maybe Coach Bud wasn't willing to do that for the Hawks. They could have traded Paul Millsap if they kept Horford and Howard. They could have gotten picks and players for him. And they could have coexisted uh, being Al Horford and Dwight Howard, but they Al just didn't want to mess with Howard's attitude and personality. Yeah, that brings us to the end of the show today. Thank you again for listening to Atlanta Sports Podcast. Remember to follow us on Twitter at ATL Sportscasts. And subscribe to us on our website and on iTunes. If you have any questions or any suggestions that come to mind, feel free to contact us on Twitter or email us at the show at atlantasportspodcast.com. We'll see you next week with another show.